All right, so uh, hello, everybody. This is Kathy Tremblay with MyFabDeals.org, and I have a great and distinct pleasure of being on the phone with Sean Bondawat, who is the president of the Bromwell Company, which is the company uh, behind Jacob Bromwell, which is a wonderful company, a wonderful website, and steeped in tradition, almost 200 years old. And we're going to learn all about it today with Sean. Sean, are you there? I am. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you. We are so psyched to have you on this. This is really probably, I'm going to say this is a, the first um, My Fab Deals uh, podcast that we're doing, and I'm so excited about it. And, you know, I just want, I know that a lot of people probably already know what Jacob Bromwell is, but for those of our readers and our listeners who aren't familiar with you, can you just give just a brief background of the of the company and a little bit of the history and how the original Jacob Bromwell got started with this? Absolutely. So Jacob Bromwell is one of the oldest companies in America, founded in 1819. Uh, like you said, it's just about 200 years old, a few years shy of 200. Um, and it is uh, the oldest kitchenware and housewares manufacturing company in North America as well. So it's a company steeped in uh, history, American history, and um, obviously much much older than <laughs> all of us here that work here today. Um, but the, the products, the products that we make are nostalgic heritage products, uh, kitchenware, bakeware, home goods, uh, various copper products like glass and copper cups, things like that. And um, they're all backed by lifetime guarantee. They're all made in the USA, and um, they all have that nostalgic feel to them. So we're, you know, we're selling in a, in a, a very niche market and to customers that appreciate those types of things. Yeah, tell, us, tell, tell me a little bit about the, the customer. How, how on earth did the customers find you? I know that a lot of it has kind of an urban and hip feel to it. Uh, so. Yeah, so we really have two, two main types of customers. So the first, the first type is, um, you know, the, the, for the kitchenware line, it's actually more older women, uh, middle-aged and older women that can identify with uh, the bakeware products like the flour sifter and the cheese grater and things like that. Um, and on that note really quickly, it's actually related to this. One in four American households actually owns a Bromwell cheese grater. Uh, they may not know it, but um, it's a pretty popular item. We've sold, you know, more than a hundred million of those since um, the company was founded. And so a lot of households still have them. And so a lot of people still still purchase those, especially women, because they're they're used to that product and they've they've used it for so many years. And then the other customer that we have is, um, like you said, the hipster uh, men and women who are in their 20s and 30s and you know urban areas, uh, Seattle, Portland, Los Angeles, Chicago, uh, New York, Boston, places like that where they. Um, they're looking for products that are unique and that speak to their individual character. I, so. That is fabulous. You know, I, I can speak to that one in four households, by the way. I don't know if it's a Jacob Bromwell, but I have one of those graders at my house that I got. Oh, my gosh. I can't tell you how long we've had it. Uh, and I don't know if I got that or if John got it from his family, but it is old. And it is the only grader we use at home. I'm, more, more away wow. from I'm not sure it's a Jacob Bromwell, but if it isn't, it is a close imitator, I am telling you. I mean, it may be a Jacob Bromwell, may not be, but, you know, over the years, unfortunately, uh, it's pretty unfortunate, but the, the products weren't always stamped with, with Bromwell on it. So it, it actually more than likely is, but, it, you know, unfortunately, there's no hard way to tell. So. I'll tell you, it has age to it. It's got a, a lot of age to it. it. It's as solid as anything we've ever had. It's the only grader. We we didn't bring it down south with us this year because we're in a tiny car, but it's um, it's like, how can we move without our grader? That is the grader. So it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that. You know what? You mentioned with, with Jacob Bromwell being nearly 200 years old, to your knowledge, Sean, are there any other companies going this strong for so long? Uh, there's a handful, but you know most of the companies that 
are that old. By this point in time, they've either been acquired, they've been renamed, they've uh, gone out of business. One one thing or another happened where they're they're either not exactly intact anymore. And there's a really only a handful of companies that are as old as we are that have still been in continuous operation making the same products uh, for that long. So it's we're, we're pretty we're pretty proud of that accomplishment. Absolutely. Oh yeah, and, and you should be. Hey, are any of his uh, any of the original Jacob Bromwell's descendants still involved? Just out of curiosity. They're not. So the um, obviously the, the the company was founded by Jacob Bromwell back in 1819, and uh, it stayed in the family for a while. I want to say um, one or two family members after he passed continued running the company, and then at that point it was it was sold. So. They're not, but I actually do have um, a relationship with some of the family members that still live in Ohio, where the company was founded, um, and it's uh, it's pretty neat to talk to them and to get their perspective on things. So, wow, I love that. Now, we back in 1819, obviously life wasn't as complicated, and I remember reading over on the site, which, by the way, that is an outstanding website. I don't know if you were behind that, but that is a fabulous, fabulous website. It's like a history story in itself. Um, but Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, it started with wire brushes. Am I correct? It did. So it started off as a wire weaving business. And a lot of people don't know what that is. Wire weaving back in the early 1800s was a pretty popular thing. Um, you know, they made the, the Bromwell Company had thousands of products in, in the catalog from wire benches to you know, flower sifters, which we obviously still make today, to uh, mops, brooms, rat traps, all different types of products that really appealed to um, Americans at that time. So wire weaving was one of the original um, types of goods that the company made. There had to be a couple of brick-and-mortar stores. Was he was, – was the Bromwell Company originally stretched throughout the frontier, or was, were the bricks-and-mortar stores – or was it a wagon? How, did, how were things sold? So, yeah, so the company was founded in Cincinnati, Ohio, which at the time was just about as west as you could get in the United States. It's just crazy to think about, but that was about – it was they used to actually call that area like the West. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, that was where the company was founded, and, and Jacob Bromwell himself set up shop. He was a war veteran of the War of 1812, hmm. uh, which was a pretty gru- gruesome uh, battle. And he, um, and we had the story on our website goes into more detail on this, but he basically um, went on a flat boat, uh, totally true story, took a flat boat crossed the Mississippi River, went to Cincinnati, Ohio, and set up uh, the Bromo Brush and Wire Wire Goods Company. Wow. And um, set up a shop in Cincinnati, Ohio, and, and hired people and, you know, started making products, and the company grew rapidly. And by the late 1800s, um, it was actually the largest manufacturing company in the United States. Really? For a short cool. period of time. Yeah. Had uh, thousands of employees across seven states, Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, all throughout the Midwest there. And um, it was a pretty big operation for a while, yeah. Can you imagine what he would think right now about the Internet? I mean, (laughs) to think that 200 years later his goods would be being sold in this, you know, this space age. Electronic world yeah when did you guys hit the internet when did uh jacob bromo go online we went our products we were you know what we were actually pretty early to e-commerce we went uh live with our site in the early 90s like 93 94 no kidding wow yeah which at the time was pretty um pretty aggressive so you know what? That's interesting. If you think about the uh, the similarities between Jacob Bromwell 200 years ago doing something that was very unusual in his day, and the company still did something unusual not even 200 years later by being one of the the pioneers in e-commerce when you think about it. That's true. Absolutely. I know that Jacob Bromwell, there's a, there's a big 
section on the site about made in the USA, and we also I've seen on I've seen on your blog where there's differences where you talk about the differences between assembled in the USA, made in the USA, etc. So there's a big point of pride I think with the Jacob Bromwell Company about being U.S. sourced. Are the craftsmen themselves using any vintage or original types of equipment? Is everything sourced in the U.S.? Tell me a little bit about that aspect of, of production. Sure. Or so, yeah, being made in the U.S.A. is absolutely important to us. It's important to our customers. Um, it's important to us ethically and morally. Uh, we want to make products here. And, and one of the reasons our products are so expensive, and, I mean, it's pretty obvious, uh, anyone looking at a product, the, the first thing they almost always notice is the price. But it, it's uh, the fact that they're made here, fully made here, to answer your question, 100% made here with material sourced domestically. Uh, so when you add up those costs, uh, it can get expensive. But again, we, we believe that making a product, where, where a product is made, is just as important as the product itself. And um, that's important to our customers and and obviously, we can't sell as many units as you know other companies sell at a Walmart or a Target um, for a fraction of the cost of ours. But it's important to us, and we're selling to a segment of the population that, that values that. So I think that's wonderful, and I mean, I value it, and I know an awful lot of people personally who do who do value that, which is, of course, one of the things that that caught my partners in my eye when we when we first came across you and we really, really love uh, featuring high quality products on the site. Now with the craftsman, I, I happen to know where one of your, um, where one of your uh, factories is. It's up near Jay, Vermont, if I'm not mistaken, which is yep. about as North as you can go in Vermont before you're at the border. It's a, just a couple of hours away from my house. Um, how many people are you guys employing these days? Because I know that area. I know the North Country, and the North Country is a tough, tough place to make a living. So to have a factory that far north says a lot about the integrity of your company. Tell me a little bit about um, the employees. Thank you. Well, sure. So we operate a few different facilities. That's the, the WAMP in North Vermont is um, our copper facility where all of our copper copper goods are made. And then we have a factory in Markle, Indiana, mm -hmm. which uh, was where we make all of our uh, heritage products, our kitchenware and bakeware primarily. And then we have offices in Los Angeles where the company's headquartered and uh, sales office in Orange County. And we have, we have a variety of different other facilities as well. Um, so overall, uh, we're employing about on and off. I mean, so the, the company's seasonal, and we, we scale up during high season. Uh, but I would say, on average, we're at about 25 to 35 employees. 25 to 35 employees? That's pretty amazing. And all that stuff comes out of the hands of 35, 25 to 35 people. Wow. Yep. Now, are the craftsmen, the ones who are, are doing I've seen some of the videos and I've seen some of the photos uh, uh, with, with some of the workmanship going into it. Are some of the craftsmen using original types of equipment? Is everything more modern or do some of them actually use some of the older older types of tools oh that's right you'd ask that so some of the you know all the products we make have brand new parts some of the products um so just to give you an example for example the uh the flower sifter mm -hmm. is authentic to the original design that was used 200 years ago so everything is brand new but we essentially recreated the tools and uh, the parts to be exact duplicates. Okay, I get you. Yeah. yeah. I, I see exactly what you're saying. Either exact or, 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 or near exact. Um, and it's been a balance that we've had to strike because we've obviously wanted to maintain the original look and feel of the product, but also increase the quality wherever, where, wherever and whenever that was needed. So, um <laughs> It's been a it's been a fine line that we've had to walk on some of the items, but whenever possible, we try to try to maintain that authenticity. Has has anybody come forward and with a real antique, with a with a really old piece? Like, what's the oldest piece you've seen come through? You know, come through since you've been on board with the company. 
you know, I've seen, I've seen, oh yeah, we get customers all the time that, that reach out with, you know, uh, a, a product, a Bromo product that they've had for, passed down for 50 years or 100 years or even more. Uh, very common. We hear from customers weekly um, with those types of comments and photos. We have, we have products here in our, in our sample room and in our office that are literally from the early 1800s, uh, original pieces. Yeah. Oh, we'd love to come across. I'd love to come across some of that type of thing. We we always have our eyes open for for pieces when we're out on the yard sale and auction circuit. So it's just one of those things I'll keep my eyes open for, especially up in the you know in the North Country. Um, so we, we talked a little bit about it, the history and what what have you. What would you say if you were to pinpoint one one particular thing? What's the most significant event? that you can think has that has been part of the company's history the you know, biggest impact or most significant event you know that's a great question and the first thing that comes to mind is uh the great depression we have a lot of a lot of um, company documents here from from the great depression and the business came extremely close to going out uh going out of business during that time and we were actually, according to records, the company was losing money every year by a lot. But the management at the time decided to, you know, stay the course and continue to employ people. And they believed in, you know, the upcoming prosperity of America and that they were going to get out of it. Um, I'm so happy that they, they decided to do that and they didn't close the doors because that would have been uh, – a fatal mistake, and a lot of businesses at that time did close their doors. So, perseverance, um, perseverance. Yep. Wow. Yep. See, how long have How long have you been part of the company, Sean? This is going to be my sixth year now. Oh, awesome! That's year. that's that's really great. I mean, I've I have to tell you, I have personally really appreciated uh, the communication that you've 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 given me and I, I mean I know you're a busy guy so it's like wow to, to be able to to talk with uh the president of a company is is really a rare a rare instance in, in your busy day and I pre I want you to know I really do appreciate it as do my partners and as do our readers because they're going to be seeing this all right so since you're since you're pretty you are pretty much the head honcho what's the best part what do you what do you like best and he's a oh boy. I mean, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of you know leaders at companies that just like to sit behind their desk and close their office door and just kind of be a hermit. You know, <laughs> I'm the exact opposite. I uh, I really enjoy people. I enjoy talking to customers. I enjoy talking to uh, constituents like yourself. Anyone that that is involved in the business in some way, I uh, I like to be on the front line as much as possible. And so. Um, while I enjoy, you know, leading and uh, setting a vision and direction for the company and managing people, I also very much enjoy being on the field and talking, uh, talking directly to to customers. So, and getting that getting that feedback directly. Well, since you're so, in, you know, you are so involved and you're involved with every aspect of the company, from you know the the person who probably packs the boxes up to the person who's hammering the copper. It, when it comes to this company. What is it you're most proud of? Boy, it's another good one. <laughs> you know, I'm going to sound a little bit like a broken record saying this, but it's it's really just the fact that our products are made here and that we're we're employing American workers. It would be it would be so much easier, so much easier to just start producing these products offshore. Um, and in so many ways, I mean, logistically it would be easier. Um, it would be cheaper. We our, our margins would go up exponentially. I mean, there'd be all sorts of, you know, you could, you could look at it, you know, and some analysts could look at it on paper and just say, that's totally the right decision. Go offshore, just like every other company go offshore. But it's really, really, um, something that I'm personally proud of that we've, that we've resisted that and that we've stayed true to our, true to our heritage. So. 
Yeah, and we're, we're going to come back to that in a minute because there's a question I want to ask you. Uh, so I just made a little note of that. So don't forget that. But I want to talk, when we just talked about going offshore, and I think about this sometimes in, whenever I'm looking at products like, like yours, which are so enduring and just so well made, and you just don't see them. You do not see products that are meant to last the way Jacob Brahma products are. We're in an era where we see so much of this. We see the plastic gadgets. We see disposable household items that we never would have seen growing up. And when we see so many people with the throwaway products, what do you think has um, contributed to the the desire for this enduring product in, in what would be considered a throwaway society? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. It might be... Uh... American society has just become such a fast-paced society. I think that might have a lot to do with it. But, you know, people people barely have time to, you know, to grab lunch. You know, they're so busy. In cases like that, so what what was it? What do you think was the turning point for some of these folks? Like, you know, the ones, especially we're talking about a lot of urban dwellers who are really attracted to the Bromwell product line. What is it that's making them? want this is it because it's so fast paced that they feel like they need to anchor themselves in something solid i mean it's it's obviously your popularity is going through the roof your popularity is is insane thank you yeah it's it's really been catching on it's been catching on and i think i think the people are longing and you know for the past in some way and um we our our brand, the Jacob Rommel brand, is, you know, the products that we sell. There's so much more than just it's just a flower sifter, or just a flask, or you know, it's so much more than that. It's our brand speaks to a time um, when life was simpler and when things were made with care, and that when people had to, you know, spend with family and friends around an open campfire and share stories and, and cook popcorn and do those types of things. And, you know, our, that, that's really what the Jacob Rommel brand stands for. And um, all of our products are really secondary to that. And I think that once, once you understand our brand and our message, it becomes really clear that, you know, that any of the products that we sell can help you kind of achieve that. So it kind of got me thinking about something. I was just thinking about, how many of those products I would love in my own home up north? We, John and I, my husband and I, have a, a mountain cottage, and it, it's 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 a vintage cottage. You know, it's been modernized, of course, but these are the types of products that would you know, fit in perfectly with our house. And I was a little surprised at a feeling that I noticed coming upon me, almost like when I'm looking at your products. It's like a rush of wistfulness. It's like, I, again, one that simplicity and that peacefulness that seems to saturate your product line. And I was thinking, am I out of my mind? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And there's also another, another part of our our product line that's extremely important to us is the, is kind of embracing the imperfection of our our products. So, you know, you look at, you go to Walmart, for example, and you, you you go to the camping section and you, you go to a, you know, try to find a stainless steel mug it's perfect perfectly machined came out of a machine in china that probably made ten thousand that day you know the same one that you're you're looking at right and there's just nothing there it's probably a three or four dollar cup and it's perfect and you use it and you throw it away and that's it it's kind of the end of it yeah yeah but you know our products are 100 percent authentic from the day they were created and and part of that means that they're that they're not perfect, and they may not have the most efficient design or the most efficient, you know, um, handle or whatever it is. But it's it's kind of embracing that that authenticity and and finding the beauty in it. So. Yeah. So surely you've seen some unusual uses for the products. Obviously. A flask is going to appeal to someone who wants to carry a nip around, you know, in style. But is there anything yeah. that you've seen any of these products used for that has had you either shaking your head or, or has surprised you? Oh yeah, yeah. So we, um, 
we we have a lot of environmentalists that use our tin cups, for example, because they're 99% biodegradable, meaning, um, you know, a lot of people, they, they'll go out camping with their cups, so they'll, they'll use their cups for painting or whatever it is. They'll, they'll use the cup for whatever they want to use it for, and then instead of throwing it away, they just throw it out in the soil or out in the, out in the field. <laughs> and uh, it, it is biodegradable, and over, over a period of time, it actually becomes one with the earth again. So um, that's pretty interesting. So <laughs> certainly not something that we, we we market or advertise for people to do, but um, we've had a lot of stories of people doing that. Fascinating. I can't believe that people would actually toss a mug. <laughs> well, anyway, <Yeah. laughs> hey, you get all kinds, right? But, oh. Yeah, yeah. Another, another interesting thing is uh, as Hollywood set designers often frequently use the product. Uh, products have been filmed in a variety of different using a variety of different films and none of which are any of that we've paid for product placement or anything like that. It's just been all to our surprise. So that's been, that's been neat. Yeah. Like I saw that, like you were actually pretty sure you saw some in the Revenant that, um, the Leonardo DiCaprio film that recently won some awards, uh, yeah, so I don't know if you saw. Did you see that movie? Not yet. We, we, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to though, because I'm, I'm sure that that's one that we would both really enjoy. It's a great film. It's long, but it's really good. And one, you know, he carries around this canteen with him, this water canteen. Um, for a majority of the movie, he's carrying this canteen around. That's a Jacob Bromwell um, nice. canteen. It's a so. And so, you know, it's interesting. So how, how do you guys find out that they're using them unless they, you know, unless they just buy them and you never know. So did you know, do you know when they're going to do this or are you just surprised? Yeah, most of the time we're just surprised. I mean, sometimes we get um, a customer that emails us to say, you know, you were featured or we get someone from directly involved in the movie. But most of the time it's, um, it, it, we just kind of come, come across it. Huh. So. I'm surprised. So, so did water canteen sales go through the roof after <laughs> the revenant? Well, for, yeah, for I would like to say yes, but in that case, really, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, it's one of those things where uh, there was no mention of Jacob Bromo anywhere. I don't think anybody were, you know, connected the dots on that one and said, oh, that's a Jacob Bromo product. But it's just interesting to to see see our items used in throughout a variety of um you know films is pretty yeah, i think that is really cool so uh, now that we're on the subject of film i want to come back to something you mentioned earlier you were talking about how there are those who would say you should take your your business offshore and blah 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 well i also noticed a mention somewhere on your blog that somehow or another you guys were on shark tank yeah yeah well we weren't uh we weren't on Shark Tank to raise money, but we were one of the Brahmo graders was used as a prop to oh, one of the companies. Oh, okay. Cause uh, I, yeah. I am a huge, huge, huge Shark Tank fan. I love it. And um, I can just see, Kevin, I can just see Mr. Wonderful saying, come on, there's, you know, give me the money. We're going to China. You know? <laughs> right. So. <laughs> That's neat. I'll have, to, I'll, have to go, I'll have to go and find that. I need to have Robert. Oh, yeah, well. Robert and Mark saying, no, stay here. Keep it made here. So. <laughs> yeah, that's a great, that's a great show. And having Lori, yeah. having Lori um, demonstrate the, the, the greater, it's like, this thing is wonderful. You can use it for everything. <laughs> get, yeah. get the greater on, yeah. on whatever that show is that she sells on QVC or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we were talking about The Revenant, which is, of course, a, a you know, a, a movie that takes place a long time ago. Have you ever noticed folks purchasing items for historical reenactment purposes? Absolutely. That's a, that's a pretty um, sizable uh, market for us, actually, for some of our products, like the tin cups. A lot of, uh, they call them Civil War sutlers. Yeah. And reenactors, they purchased those tin cups because our, our tin cups were actually made by the Bromwell Company and supplied to uh, Confederate and uh, Union soldiers during the Civil War. Awesome. Ha, so I knew it. The exact same cup, the same design, made on the same machines, made by the same company. So it's uh, 100% historically accurate and authentic. What else? Anybody got new in the works? Anything new in the works? 
And I would say every year we, we probably launch maybe a dozen new items. Uh, we put a lot of care and thought into those products. We don't just randomly make things to make them. Uh, they have to have have meaning and purpose and have to tie in nicely to our current assortment. So. Yeah, I've seen a uh, be- yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, I was going to say I've seen a couple of uh, limited editions that you've had in the past, and I wonder about that a little. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that being said, I mean, I was just going to say the limited edition blasts uh, are something we we had some success with, and we're going to be rolling out some new designs this year. Pretty exciting. Yeah. So I know I, I know we thought I've been taking a lot of your time, but before we close, anything any meaningful fun anecdotes, any like best thing a customer has ever shared or one of the more unusual things you've seen that you've seen in your, your time there? Uh, yeah, I want to say this was back in 2013, a few years ago. We had a customer call in and say that he, he was out stranded in the middle of the desert in the summer. I think he was out in Arizona. And he had no food with him. He was lost. He had no compass. He had nothing with him. He was alone. And the only thing he had with him was his flask. And it was filled with water. And he said that that flask saved his life. Oh, that was pretty neat. That is so cool. I thought that. I thought you were going to say that he found the, you know, the 800 number carved in the flask and he caught it <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> Anything else you want to share? Uh, anything you're looking forward to, especially with regards to what's, what's upcoming for the future of the company? Uh, you know, we're just, we're, we're excited every year to see, our mission kind of catching on and more people joining our movement, more, more customers, you know, purchasing American made and, and, you know, coming around to that idea of spending a little bit more money, but getting a better quality product that's going to last a lifetime. And our, our sales are reflecting that and our growth is there. And so we're just, we're just excited to keep on going. And, uh, I, I'm excited too, you know, and I want to just remind uh, my my readers and my listeners who might be listening in on this after after we're done and I get this up on um, YouTube or whatnot that uh, here at, at at our website at myfabdeals.org we we are putting up as, as much as our time can get us putting every every one of these items up there for you to see if you happen to be on our site. Uh, make sure you, you visit the Jacob Bromwell site. It's, it's a wonderful site. I don't think I have ever seen such an in-depth site, uh, Sean. And so with that, I want to also mention to you that we will be bestowing the very original, the very one and only My Fab Deals stamp of approval. We only give this to companies that really – have got it all together when it comes to customer service, when it comes to quality products, uh, how you treat your employees. There's, there is nothing, nothing that we love more than to just like be able to shout a vendor or a merchant from our rooftops. And that's what we're doing with, with you guys. It's, it's a wonderful company. I really hope. Wow. More, Very much appreciated. Yeah. Well, I'll be sending you a link that, that shows you the, uh, the stamp of approval once we, we get that up on the site. And once we get this, this, uh, piece in in the uh you know in the in the article section which will take me a little time because of course it's a lot there's a lot we covered today but i want to i want to is there anything else that you have to say or anything you would like our listeners and readers to know sean um just go ahead and blow no i i appreciate all your time and uh, for anyone out there that's uh, interested in uh purchasing from us we we hope to earn your business and hope hope to have you as a customer so that's fabulous. We've been speaking with Sean Bondawat, who's the president of the Bromwell Company, uh, which is the Jacob Bromwell Company, been around for almost 200 years now. And uh, we thank all of you for joining us, and thank Sean for, for taking time out of his busy day. And we'll see you all at, uh, at our website and our respective sites again soon. And uh, thank you, listeners, and, and thank you, readers, and uh, check back with us again soon. Thank you.